Hello, I'm going to go through a few different types of information classification. So if you come across the phrase information classification in an exam situation, it's looking for you to talk about one of these following terms. So let's start by going through some of the most common words. And I would say the purpose of these classifications is all about the visibility, but also the content of information. So visibility is about who can see the information who is able to access and see it and the content is about what the information includes. So we've got kind of two separate areas to classify and so it means a lot of information will have several classifications. So starting with a fairly simple one which is personal information, this is information which can identify a person. Some personal information on its own might not identify a person but it can be used perhaps with other personal information to narrow down to a particular person. So somebody's name is personal, but on its own does not necessarily identify them only. Whereas business information is not about individuals. This is about a organization. You know, a business is a particular type of information holder who wants to make profit, but we often use business just here as an organization um, identifier. Now those two sort of go together as sort of slight opposite, I suppose. But another two which go together are sensitive and non-sensitive information. So sensitive information is information that should be protected. There should be some care taken to ensure that it doesn't leak out. So medical data is an example of something which, which is quite important to individuals. And so someone like a doctor would have to take care in how they store that information. Whereas non-sensitive information doesn't really matter if it was released, you probably want to be careful, but actually it wouldn't cause harm to a person or a business if it was made public. And so that therefore wouldn't really be private information. Private information is where only a select few people can see this information. So there is some limit on who is able to see it. It might be a fair few people, you know, in a school, every teacher might be able to see certain private information. That's not loads of people, but it is a, a decent amount. And public information is available for anyone to see. So it might be on a public website, which anyone can go across and see. Private and public are, again, sort of opposites together. Now, getting a little bit more serious with sensitive information, you have confidential information. This is where the access is really, really limited. So private information might be available to say, like I say, you know, every teacher in a school, but you might have confidential information in school, which only say a couple of teachers are allowed to see because it's a little bit more sensitive than maybe just other private information. So confidential is where usually a label is put on it and it's made really clear to people that only a few individuals can actually see and deal with this information. Within an organization, there might be a punishment if you say leak confidential information. But classified information is the next step up. This is where often you can get punished by law. So classified information is usually only really in sort of military and government contexts. Now this is especially sensitive information. So if it gets leaked, if somebody else sees it who shouldn't have access, that might have a really serious consequence for lots of people. So confidential can be used in different businesses. Classified is usually a government only term. Let's have a look then at how these classifications can get applied to different scenarios. So let's say we're talking about somebody's first name what would this be? What classifications would this hold? Well, our first names are usually public. We tell people our first names. You might have it up on social media as well. They are personal. You can identify somebody based on their first name, not only their first name, but with other bits of information, you might be able to narrow down to a particular person, especially if you have quite a unique name. But crucially, first names are, I would argue, non-sensitive. You don't really have to be particularly careful with somebody's first name because usually they're quite common and on their own maybe can't identify an individual person. Whereas if we looked at a different scenario of maybe a restaurant's unique recipe, so thinking something like KFC, their unique blend of spices, that's their unique recipe. Well, this is business information first of all. It's private because a restaurant wouldn't publish a unique recipe in many cases. And if it is really important to their business, you could argue this is sensitive information because it would have a bad consequence if it was leaked out. And the restaurant might tell their staff this is confidential information, meaning that they shouldn't release it, only maybe the chefs 
know how this recipe works, it's confidential. If it leaked out, you might get sued, but you wouldn't be sent to prison for leaking it. Whereas something like details on a military weapon, potentially you could go to prison if you released this information because, well, first of all, this is business. Again, it's private information. You, you'd think in many cases it's sensitive because if there was important details on a weapon being released to other governments, that might cause an issue. But in many cases, this would be classified information. But if a government put this label on, telling people to be really, really careful because they could get punished if they leak it. So classified is the next step up, usually only applies to governments. Where something like a person's voting history is maybe a little bit more complicated. Personally, I would argue this is private. You're, what you voted for is a private, um, it should be private. It's personal, potentially. It might show somebody's name or their address and sensitive. You usually don't want people knowing who you voted for. It's usually quite a private decision. And when I say voting, I mean in things like elections. You could argue this would be treated as confidential, but I tend to think that actually your voting history, probably nobody should know it, whereas confidential usually suggests that a few people are allowed to see it. So I'd personally label voting histories as just those three classifications. You could argue it's confidential as well. The last thing to talk about then are two other quick classifications, which are all about anonymizing information. So anonymization is removing data from personal information so that the person can no longer be identified. If somebody's anonymous, we don't know who they are. And so anonymous data was personal, but is no longer personal because we can't identify who that person is. And often this is done by companies because they want to comply with legislation, with laws, and the main one in the UK is the Data Protection Act. So you might, after a while, anonymize your data so if you can't get punished by this law. You might actually decide to not fully anonymize it. If it's fully anonymized, you can't tell who it is at all. Partially anonymized is where you might try and get away of leaving bits of it in. And this can be to try and retain some usefulness. If you delete all of the personal information, you might find that actually you can't do much with it. And so you might try and be sneaky and just cut out parts of it, often replacing these with symbols. So for example, something like a person's name and their postcode is probably enough to identify them as an individual. Well, a postcode usually applies to quite a few properties, but a name with a postcode makes it more likely that it's just applying to one person. So that is personal, and if you left it you know, in a database for years, might not comply with the Data Protection Act. So instead what you might do is you might try and partially anonymize it and cut out bits of it. So you might leave in a first name because like I said before, it's not the most sensitive information in the world. But you might cut off the last name to make it again a little bit more uh, anonymous. And the postcode, you might limit the postcode so that it only shows part of it, only shows the sort of area code, not Buckingham Palace in this example. So. That's a way you might partially anonymize it by adding asterisks or even black highlighting called redaction. When you redact text, you add this black overlay to try and hide sensitive parts of it. 